We're having a little winter lamentation <laughs> session here <laughs> at know. the Great Northern Sex Cast. The show this week is late because of infirmity yeah. on, on all <laughs> fronts. My God. First it was me, and then you went down. Yeah, another... Uh, the, the, the lovely thing about uh, being ha- having, like bowel issues, inflammatory and all that sort of stuff, is that you don't really know when they're going to hit. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just sort of end up at the ER for, you know, hours because I know what it is, but what if it is my gallbladder? You know what I mean? Oh, so I yeah. said, I got to check this shit out. And I was like, oh, I was so tired. God. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're getting ready. I mean, it's, I think Minnesotans are tired. They're really, really tired. I mean, we don't mind winter. No, but it, when it happens as fast and furious, that that there's there's a that there's there's a one they have in a fast and furious Minnesota snow. There, you know, that's yeah, yeah, uh, we get a little tired. Yeah, but I, I think that people are doing a little shopping, or they're finally getting their tax returns because I'm noticing a little bump. Mm-hmm. I mean, Valentine's the weather killed us, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm noticing a few things now. I think people are. Uh, in between the aches and the pains and the uh, and the snow shoveling, <laughs> I think they're still getting it on. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> yes, I'm relatively certain you're, I mean, you're right. Yeah, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow uh, we've got anywhere from five inches to twelve inches of snow, or maybe there's some rain. I think there are folks that are just you know they're going to hit the grocery store tonight. <laughs> I'm sh- I already know they're hitting fantasy gifts because the folks are out in the stores. And then uh, I think they're going to be uh, snuggling up on uh, uh, Saturday. And just occasionally, it would be like, have some sex, then go get some food, and then maybe take a layer off the driveway. Yeah. And then it would be like, have some more sex. Yeah. Maybe take another mm-hmm. layer off the drive. you know. You know, and there could be incentives for whichever partner is willing to do the, you know, there could be like oral <laughs> incentives for driveway clearing <laughs> And bonuses for ice dam removal, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, you know that I, could be good. Do you get those? I have a little bit on my garage and one section of the. Uh, I have one older section of roof on my house. Okay, but I've just been pulling the snow off. I've got a, a roof rake. Yeah. Although, as my, uh, um, I would probably be like you know vulva deep in the snow because it's so deep. But my friend, who's taller than me, has so much snow. He's like he he was now balls deep in snow. Really? And he goes, I go that. That, that's got to be yeah a little bit more uncomfortable, I would think. That's got to be a little chilly as you're raking your roof. I would think. Mm-hmm. I I would very, very much think. Yeah. Um, so I've got to make a decision because I have plans to try something tomorrow with a friend of mine. We're going to go to brunch, and I just am not... I mean, I'm going along because I'm, I'm my inner skeptic. Have you ever heard of a beer mosa? Ew. That's what I said. I actually responded with a barf emoji, but it's a thing. Beer and orange juice? Beer, or champagne, champagne, and orange juice. I have no... Uh, what if it's that one beer that sort of has the orangey flavor already? Oh, yeah. That's um, a... Um, yeah, I know. I've, I've had it. It's really good. Yeah, Blue Moon. Well, it yeah. could be that or... I don't know. Mm. But... You know, so she challenged me to go to brunch and try this. And, um, but I just don't know if tomorrow's the best day to be hitting the roads because I've, I've got quite a drive between the location and where I live. So we'll have to see. I'll just be, well, I've been trying to get onto the radar, uh, for under the Minneapolis, uh, uh, thing I use uh, IntelliCast and a few other things, and it keeps saying page not found. So I think everyone's going to there. <laughs> oh, so, so that I just checked like in a Dina zip code, and that one pops up. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> God. God. It, it is. It is the thing. We're just. We're just. We're tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean everything. The winter has taken over, and um, yeah. So, anyways, don't go out if you don't have to, and and stay home and have sex. So, um. The, we start out today, and by the way, I did spill my lunch on my boobs. So, oh. in case you noticed that, yeah, a friend, of, a friend of mine just spilled an entire rum and uh, uh, rum drink down her cleavage. She's on vacation. Oh, so she then she just wandered in the uh, ocean to like rinse it off. Well, that that really doesn't yeah. sound like too traumatic of no, an experience. No, then, not at all. Not Actually, drunk, I, uh, drunk little fishies, drunk little fishies. And now mm. I'm bitter. Yep. Um. So, uh, this woman. Uh, or a guy, actually, who was the volunteer women's volleyball coach at the University of Kansas, got arrested after police found dozens of pairs of underwear and other items stolen from the homes of the volleyball players that he coached. How He's gross. Stolen from their homes? They don't have, like, a locker room or something around? Well, unclear. Uh, unclear. unclear. Oh. No, they, they had had a series of break-ins. 
break-ins oh. on the teams. Yeah. <laughs> And they got a warrant. Well, he probably knows, like, you know, it's a team. They probably chat saying when they're going out and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's just a high amount of creep. And you know what pisses me off about that is the fact that there are a lot of people that are perfectly good coaches, perfectly reasonable human beings. And now, you you know, people take, like, this one person and they're like, well, what if our, what if our coach does this? I mean, these, these are the people that ruin it for everybody else. Yeah. Well, listen to this, though. One thing I will say for this guy, Skylar Yee, um, he's very organized thief. Check this out. So um, here's the itemization of what they found. A roughly 40-door clear plastic storage container, a number of drawers labeled with names of current and former KU volleyball players, and one player with the Lawrence Landsharks under-18 league. Each drawer with a name had underwear inside, six plastic stackable containers, each containing several pairs of women's underwear, an ottoman and bags containing pink high heels, boots, a sundress, and a jumpsuit that the victims had been reported taken from them. Also recovered were more underwear, bras, Halloween costumes, jewelry, and sex toys from unidentified owners. So he had like, he had a whole, he went to like Closets R Us and like, you know, labeled, filed. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm now imagining and I don't know if you're, the officers who discover this and just sit there and there's got to be like, blink, blink, blink. Oh yeah. my God, take a picture of this. If you don't think there wasn't a few uh, of their own personal cell phones coming out, probably so, you know, nothing was identifiable, but you, oh my. Yeah, four felonies um, oh. and 15 counts of theft total not, for. Well, when he goes to jail, he's going to have a much smaller place to organize, so. Well, maybe he could become the, you know, Marie Kondo of. Of, of uh, whatever yeah. penitentiary he goes Yeah. To. Yeah, I think so. Does this spark joy? <laughs> Obviously, it all sparked joy. Oh, my God. I watched. I maybe watched, he... I watched maybe 15 minutes of that woman's show all together. I poked around. And I, actually, the amount of clutter in the people's home she went into made me uncomfortable. You couldn't even watch? No, I couldn't even watch. Yeah. I, yeah. No. And then and I'm just... Well... I, I think that he, maybe he should try the Marie Kondo defense. Mm-hmm. He could he could argue that I know that it sparked these undies sparked more joy in me than they did in those girls. <laughs> I think he should try oh. it. Why the hell not? I missed my calling. That I should have been a criminal defense lawyer. That is so creepy. Yeah, it's gross. What about um, uh, people having uh, meal deals um, that uh, that have uh, porn names? So, okay. So meatless in Seattle, Jurassic pork. Okay. So they've, they've got a place now they've got that, that hosts the porn movies. And then they have, you know, for 16 bucks, you get the wine, the dine and the movie. And so they, um, are just naming. Honestly, this seems really eighties. Really? Yeah. I mean, it just, you can watch porn it on your phone anywhere why would you have to go anywhere plus the fact that there was all sorts of you know there was a lot of parodies that started in the 80s and silly names and stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah yeah I don't, you know i just i mean i know that food and sex are both are, are, are both about appetites and, and kernel and stuff like that but honestly they, they need to be separate mm-hmm and it's really good. Have the sex first so you don't have, like, the little food baby. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a bunch easier. And then, 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 then go get the foods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm noticing that my, as, as I get older, because the food, I just like, oh, yeah, oh, my God. No, sex first, then go out to dinner. It's yeah. easier. Well, yeah. And quite honestly, mm-hmm. um, you know, watching porn is not a group sport for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just... I don't want to see other people's reactions to it. No, no. I mean, I suppose, I mean, there are times when, like, you're younger and, like, you put something in for the first time and, like, it was about five minutes, like, huh? And then, like, then you put it away. But, yeah. No. No, 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 no. I just, no. Okay. So tell me if you'd be pissed about this. Okay. A mother in Australia was getting ready to take her kids on a trip to the zoo. So she went and bought some animal toys, you know, like to keep them busy in the car or whatever. And maybe, you know, to start teaching them about the animals that they were going to go see. Um, But she bought um, an elephant, a lion, and a hippo. And um, she's got three kids. Well, she 
got the thing out of the bag and the lion had a giant penis on it. And, um, she, she said she didn't notice it at first and she only realized that it was there after a little girl. She's like three said, mom, what's with the willy on this toy? Basically. And, um, then they both, you know, well, kind of like looked at it. This stuff on, she's like at a toy store and she's like buying. She bought him from Kmart, you know, like she said she thought it would be fun to, you know, take some animal toys with them. And, you know, I mean, I could I get that instead of buying at the gift shop is probably way cheaper. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. They already have a toy. They have something in their hand. Right. So I think this is really smart, that, actually. That is effing brilliant. Yeah. Except for the lions hung like a horse. No I pun intended. Testicles, too. Yeah. Oh, and okay. and the kids were all cracking up and um, they were just laughing, laughing, laughing. And she's like, I've never seen anything like this. It's stupid, plain and weird. So she's calling for a ban on the toy. <laughs> she goes, it's funny and you can't help but laugh, but it's just not appropriate. Why, what, what's not appropriate about it? Upon an animal with actual parts. Yeah, but I I'm think... I'm very it, confused. It, 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 well, you know, all she had to do goes, yeah, it's a male lion. It has a penis. Let's move on. I mean, honestly, she would have squashed it in about two seconds if she paid no, if she went, uh, whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, best thing about little kid though, did I do a target run? Yeah. And a little girl in the cart behind me says, Mom, I don't like school. And she's like, Well, of course, you said you like school before. She goes, Well, yeah, I do, but I'd rather be in my pajamas. <laughs> That's... And I looked at the mom, and she looked at it about the same time. We both said, y- we-, we can't really argue with that. I, I can't, yeah, I got nothing. No, I, got no- I got nothing for that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, This is good. I'd much rather be in my jammies too. Well, technically, I don't wear jammies, so honestly, if I'm home, I'd rather you know just be wearing nothing anyway. So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. Okay, this week's sex robot story mm. is not about a specific robot. It's um, a woman. Her name is oh, she's a sex researcher, Doctor Wednesday Martin. She thinks that women are more likely to stray than men. And she thinks that male sex robots should be made specifically to keep women from straying. (laughs) This is a woman. (laughs) Well, I mean, I don't think they're more likely. I I think they probably, (laughs) they probably do, you know, cheat just like guys do. People don't like, you know, but you are, you know, we are genetically, you know, supposed to try and find the best uh, DNA, right? Isn't that how that works? Something like that. Mm -hmm. And especially now with all the, with all the DNA testing, people are finding out that, you know, the people they think they are their parents aren't their parents. Yeah. Or they have, you know, you know, spare brothers and sisters out there they didn't know about. Well, can I just say one thing about this DNA thing? Um, I have a friend who's a criminal defense attorney, and he has said it's insane to do that because it opens your DNA up to a database and it makes it easy. Now, this is a criminal lawyer talking, well, right? Yeah. But he's like... You know, you could be framed for a crime. Like you, they could find your DNA in a store because you went and bought something. Then it gets robbed, and you get pinned for that crime because mm-hmm. your DNA was there. Mm-hmm. So he's like, "Do not go get the DNA testing." And quite honestly, I'm like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, and it depends on who you are too. I mean, there are just certain groups of people that there aren't enough folks that have been tested, so it's just way generic. Oh yeah, I have a friend who makes um uh, uh, makes props for cosplay. Okay. And uh, I was uh, out of town uh, with my daughter because she was doing a school thing, and I, I drove them back. Uh, okay, so... So that's, so that's why there's six uh, plastic prop guns, sort of like space prop guns. Yeah, I tur- I just turned my head as Colleen was speaking, and I'm like, it looks like heavy artillery back here. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah, it's like... And what's cosplay again for people who don't know? Costume play, cos- you know, stuff like that, yeah. Oh my God, those are so those crazy. Are the, those are the prop guns. So I was just sort of giggling over the fact that, you know, in fact, I was gun running because I, you know, went across, <laughs> went across state lines with these suckers. But yeah, they're just, I, yeah, he, he uh, modifies, I think, super soakers and other stuff and turns them into. Um, oh, so they're not heavy. They look like they'd be really heavy. That's funny. Okay, so like Colleen and I were chat, 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 squirrel. I mean, yeah. that's like how this show goes. But anyways, um, we were talking about the, um, the sex researcher that oh, yeah. says that. You know, women, you should have sex robots. But listen to this quote that she has. I think this is kind of interesting. She goes, um, she says, most women experience a serious drop in desire in years one to three of a relationship. What's interesting is a lot of women who appear to have gone off sex in a long-term partnership haven't really gone off sex. In fact, if they could be with a new partner or even a robot, their desire would come roaring back. What do you think? Uh. <laughs> 
It would keep them from doing the real cheating. Honestly, I don't think it has anything to do with male or female. <laughs> it, it wears off for most folks. Everybody, it is study after study that says that everybody's got the "Oh my God, I can't see enough of you." Or blah 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 blah. Yeah. And then it, then it wears off, and then you have kids, and then it goes down, and then the kids leave. And if you have a good relationship, then you have like really great sex when the kids are gone. Yeah. And, you know. Either that or you break up one of the two. But you know, yeah. it depends on what was going on in those other years. But if you take time for each other, I mean, like this weekend, excellent time to take time for each other. Yeah. And you and, and if you're like, you know, if someone's like has a sore back, use some extra pillows or uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody, you know, if, if someone's achy from the winter or broke something, this is an excellent time to think about like new positions. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way. Um, on that note, uh, you know, the, the women sex robot industry is <laughs> booming. It's just booming. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, but they really, the male ones, um, there aren't that many yet and they're still in the $15,000 price range. So they're not yet mainstream, but we'll I, see. I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure what in the world a male sex robot is going to be able to do that, that just a regular toy a uh, vibrator wouldn't be able to do mm-hmm. <laughs> that way. Yep. <laughs> so um London Fashion, more from the London Fashion Week. Another bizarre thing that was featured um was uh women in see through body suits adorned with fake pubic hair. So basically, um, they were prancing around in outfits, showing off nipples, and then um, strips of suggestively placed faux fur that look like landing strips and, you know, things like that. Can I just ask you something? If I thought this was a fashion show, I thought that meant clothes. Yeah. Clothes. I'm exactly. Fashion, sure. clothes, clothes. Yeah. We sell a lot of body stockings. People really, really like them. Always have. Um, lace ones and open crotch ones and fishnet ones and all this really fun stuff. Okay. But, you know, people wear them under stuff. It's just, I, I, I don't know what the, if, if you have to rely on some sort of gimmick like that, how, maybe, maybe your designs aren't all that good. I just, I just think it's so funny that the runway shows and the things that everybody goes to are not clothes that people wear. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was just like, it's supposed to be like a, like, like, like a point, the point of view. Did you see the one where like models were carrying other models, like on their backs and over their shoulders? No. And, oh yeah. That was where too. There was like the people, uh, models were strapped to other models. Accessorizing each other. Yeah. It was hilarious. And I just want to, and at least here, here's something good. At least the models that were carrying the other models were wearing flat shoes. Well, that's good. I mean, okay, it's one thing if you want to be a performance artist, mm-hmm. but then be that. If- yeah, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, there, there, were, there, were, there were models like someone's like they were walking around with someone like hanging off the front of them like they were in 69 position. You know, with the, you know. Yeah, yeah. Waist, and, I'm just, uh, and the other one's on the back. And, the side, and I'm just like, I mean, I, these, are, these are tiny little people. But then again, of course, they're carrying tiny, other tiny little people. But I mean, I don't if, care. I mean, if you, okay, if you get booked for a show, let's say you know you get some famous designer and you show up. I mean, I certainly hope the paycheck was enormous. Well, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking somebody that avant garde probably doesn't have the money usually because again, what are you selling again? Mm-hmm. You can't sell the models. In yeah. theory, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's a whole other conversation in trafficking. But, but at least when, when when I go to a sex toy show, there's like sex toys you can buy. Well, and not they're only- modeling, you know, they got walls and walls of dildos. I mean, Ducky, a Ducky Doolittle, she's at a show right now, and she, Blush Toys has some really fun stuff that we're, you know, we're looking that she was looking at. It's always fun to follow her on Instagram and stuff like yeah. that, so I can see the uh, uh, the new toys before they, you know, before they come here and stuff like that. And we, you know, and I, I really should get to Vegas and go to a show or Vegas or Las Vegas or Los Angeles. Although they've had snow too, so maybe I. Don't know. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the hell out of here right now. Um, but, you know, when I go to a sex toy show, there's there's sex toys. Mm-hmm. I, if I go to a fashion show, I think there should be fashion. I mean, clothes. Yeah. I, I, I go to a lingerie show, there's lingerie. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, like if I were a model showing up for a job and I said, okay, what am I going to be wearing? And they're going to be going, well, you're wearing her. I'd be like, you know, no. I don't wear people. I don't wear people. Okay. And how that feeds into body image and what you're doing and stuff like that. It's just got to be weird. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Definitely weird. Okay, sex dreams. 
Um, so I've got... A, I haven't had a good sex dream in a long time. Oh, I have. Oh, it's all just been about snow removal and doing laundry and filling out forms for my kids. My dreams are the most ordinary, everyday things. I am due for a good sex dream. Well, I would swap you because I have I have frequent sex dreams, but mm-hmm. my, my thing is I also have nightmares. Mm-hmm. And twice this week, once I woke up screaming because 911 wouldn't help me. Oh. And um, my husband had to like calm me down. Then the second time I sat up and I, I, I was swearing that I saw something crawling up onto the ceiling and I'm like, ah, and he's like, there's nothing there. And I'm like, it's right there. You know? So yeah, I think I, I, I'd rather shovel. I I would rather a little mundane. Yes. I would rather shovel. Um, but I'm going to give you some, um, interpretations. We'll post this article so you can read it for yourself. We'll hit the highlights for it here, but we'll post the article on the, uh, great Northern sex cast Facebook page. Um, so what do they mean? So if you've ever had a dream where you've had sex with an acquaintance, um, maybe somebody you met six months ago or, you know, just cross paths with, it's, it's, it's not about being attracted to them, but more to do with just something about them. So just one thing that you thought it just laid and, and marinated in your subconscious. Do you agree? Disagree? <laughs> yeah. yeah. A, a, a smile occurs to you or, or something. Who knows? It could have could Most likely, I bet you anything, it was like a tone of voice or their smell. Oh yeah, smells. Mm-hmm. No, smells. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, someone who isn't your partner. So if you're dreaming about somebody who isn't your other half, don't worry about it. Um, but if it is happening all the time, you should examine your actual sex life. Um, take a look at the uh, the frequency, and um, it could be simply that you're not getting enough from them. Like you guys need to be a little more often, um, or are you getting enough but not enough variety? So it's not. You know, they said don't flip out. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, I mean that's just. It- your dreams are exactly what they're just dreams, you know, going through the, uh, you know, it's supposed to be fantasy. It's supposed to be, you know, your, your brain picking through all the flotsam and jetsam that's stuck in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, cause I would, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's like some of mine are so scary and disturbing mm-hmm. that I'm sitting there going, God, you know, I don't feel like I'm a, aff- you know, afraid mm-hmm. all the time. You know, I have no idea what that is. What about your boss? Okay. Um, if, if you're dreaming about your manager or even a coworker, it's just the same as thinking about a friend. Um, and, um, it's, it, it, the, the boss ones though, that has to do with a position of power. And that means maybe you need to do some experimentation, um, in your personal sex life, but in either case, coworker or superior, um, figure out if there's something that you need to connect with them on, um, to work out just as a person to person thing. You're thinking about them in another way, but it just they they leaked into your sex dream. <laughs> yep. If it's yeah. a, if so, it, so, in other words, if I was drinking about sex with a boss, then I'd be drinking and thinking about masturbation. <laughs> yes, yes, you would. Yes, you would. Yeah, mm-hmm. Same sex. Um, if you're not um, mm-hmm. homosexual. Um, they said um, if it seems weird and random, it's not about having that necessary curiosity, but more about the person, what that person represents, something about them that you like. It doesn't mean that you're bi or gay or any of that kind of stuff. Someone you hate, um, happens that seems cruel and unfair. Um, but it could be, uh, that your subconscious is trying to get you to like make peace. (laughs) Oh yeah. That's not going to happen. Or (laughs) they have some skill or something that you'd like for yourself. Yeah. I, I just know. think that, like, you know, sex dreams are probably pretty ordinary. And then whatever else happens to be popping in, like I said, mm-hmm. leaks into the sex dream. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is interesting. Mm. Um, there's a new bed design that's supposed to control bed hogs. <laughs> Okay. okay. So maybe it's somebody who keeps stealing the blankets or rolls over onto your side of bed, mm-hmm. something like that. So this is a new smart bed. It's called the Lane Keeping Aid <laughs> <laughs> or Lane Keeping Bed. And it's designed to keep selfish sleepers in check. So I know. Isn't this great? Oh. A rotating mattress adjusts to make sure that you both have equal sides of the bed with pressure sensors. <laughs> There's like an alarm that goes off if they get over on your side. Oh. Motion control technology ensuring you both have space. Um, it gets them to go back in space. 
Oh, and it, they said so. I mean, I, I pretty much. I mean, it's my bed. I pretty much sleep diagonal on a queen size bed, mainly yep. because they're usually cats that yep. are somewhere on the foot, and I have to try not to, you know, kick them. And so, you know, so you know, so when I do share the bed, I'm like, ah, too hot, or <laughs> what? There's all this, all this wind space. I'm just not. It is. It is. But it never occurred to me that you know to um that that I needed a bed. <laughs> Sorry, this. this- I mean, <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> I'm just having all sorts of bizarre. But I don't. Can you like set the alarms? Do you know to be like, oh god, oh god, move over? Would it be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But listen to this quote. Listen to this quote. For those who share their bed with a space invader, precious hours can be lost can s- you- simply trying to reclaim a fair share of the mattress. Well, what do you like? Can you like turn it off when you're actually having sex? Because then you're pretty much in the same spot on the bed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Now it's going to make me cough. Okay. Oh, they said, look, you know, this is a good idea because. It, uh, you know, it can ruin a relationship. Okay. So my husband is a serious snuggler and he's a very tall man. He's six, four and he's, you know, and I don't mind being clamped. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But what I do have a problem with is if I am not totally sleepy, you know, or if I have fallen asleep and he's on right in my ear and he snores right into my ear. I cannot be breathed on. Even when I, even like I had a toddler, I have to figure out how to turn her face. I, 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 I can have an arm around me. I cannot be breathed on. Really? It drives me crazy. No, it's I just. Don't have the hot, ah, ah. Yeah, that doesn't, for honestly, that doesn't bother me, which is mm. kind of surprising. But, mm-hmm. but if he starts snoring right in my ear, I just lose it. And I feel bad because he, it's not something he does on purpose. no. no, no. But I'm like, ah! Nah, I tend to be the snorer, so I, yeah, I can get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, two Rhode Island strippers have been charged. <laughs> I don't know if I can say this out loud. I, I mean, without laughing. Two Rhode Island strippers have been charged with stealing a police officer's handgun. He is now on leave and under internal investigation. Was he getting a lap dance while he still had his weapon in his holster? And then the weapon was not in the holster? No. Oh, okay. He <laughs> Something wasn't in the holster, it yeah. sounds like. But what happened was um, he locked it into his, um, you know, his glove box in his car. And he gave one of the dancers um, the keys to his car. To He said he, she could borrow a phone charger. And, um, she went in there and got his gun and took it and, um, yeah, it wasn't as exciting as that kind of thing. Yeah. It's really funny because I mean, honestly, it it only, you know, it it only truly makes the news because they're strippers. Because I mean, honestly, if it was two workers at the local ice cream shop, it's not nearly as salacious as fun as to say strippers. Right. I mean, just, I mean, sex work, strippers, all that sort of stuff. I mean, you know, something happens at one of my stores. It definitely makes a headline than, you know, something happens at at, at another little, you know, like another gift shop. Yeah. It's just, you know. Yeah. I just, you know, I think it's a really good idea idea mm-hmm. um, to not give your car keys to anybody. Yeah. Ever. Mm-hmm. Especially if, I don't know, you have a weapon in the car. Right. Just saying. So um, this TV producer named Jana Hawking um, had broken up uh, with her boyfriend and she said, you know what? Um, I had sent him pictures of my boobs when we were together and she was really worrying about revenge porn, which is becoming a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, laws against it in different, in different states. I'm not sure if Minnesota has one yet. I can't remember. I know there was some talk about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have something on that. Let me, let me tell you what, what she did. Cause I thought this was pretty interesting. She broke into his home to wipe the evidence from his phone and she found it deleted it and escaped without him knowing. And then she warned anybody else who decides to send nudes, you know, you've got to be mm-hmm. careful. Okay. Why would you tell somebody that you broke into somebody's house? Cause oh, now yeah, she's done something yeah, I mean, that's yeah. illegal. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But then again, I mean, and, and, but there's also a copyright law there, too, because from what I understand, the person who takes the picture owns the image. Okay. So... so um, I can say this because it's out in the public do- domain, okay? Mm-hmm. And you can probably, I don't know if you know this person, you might, because mm-hmm. he was involved um, with a podcast network that you and I started out with, um, Jeff Dubay. Um, mm-hmm. He was a former K fan personality. He and I worked there at the same time when he was still working with uh, Paul Allen. And it was, it was a horrible situation where he got into drugs and his entire life. Do you know his story? Yeah, yeah, I know. I think he's back in prison or is he out halfway house he's, well I'm not sure. he's out he's had a difficult time with 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 addiction well very difficult yeah. very very yeah. brutal time mm-hmm. and i was so astounded you know i never would have you never know who might be dealing with something like that i'm mm-hmm. telling you and i saw the yeah. guy all the time mm-hmm. so anyway but since then many things have happened but about i think it was this year it was in the last couple months um my somebody else that i know that used to work with him came up and said oh my god um, I went on Twitter and um, thought that Jeff's Twitter account had been hacked. And I said, well, why? And he goes, because there's these videos of him romping and having sex with a bunch of men. And it's it's him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, my God. Well, they got the account down and um, all of that kind of stuff. Long story short, he ended up going on Facebook live and saying, yep, that was me. And it was when I was in the worst of one of my Mm -hmm. bad runs, um, with it. And And someone posted it to, um, for extortion or to, well, it was an Mm ex-girlfriend and my sincere hope, you know, I give him all the credit in the world for having the the nerve Mm -hmm. to say, yeah, you know, here's the deal. I, Mm -hmm. I mean, I just can't even imagine what a nightmare his life has become, but I hope she gets in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I, a lot. I, I think Minnesota does have, or past one house, not another, or something dealing with revenge. You know, uh, posting you know pictures, you know, to embarrass or extort, or you know, and otherwise, you know, harass, you know, an uh, uh, an ex partner. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I mean, yeah, I mean, even when my kid was little, I, you know, she, you know, new phones and or they had computers or iPads or whatever. I'm like, no naked pictures. Yeah, you know? she's like, Mom. I'm like, no, you just don't. Yeah, I mean, hell. I mean, I, I, I also have. I said, really, there are also should also be no pictures of you ever holding a drink. You yeah, know, honestly. Yeah, you just be no. I mean, I know, I know several people in uh, PR land, and different places, and stuff like that, and they just no. If there's, I mean, there might be a picture of them that they don't know is being taken at like a family barbecue, and they're holding something. But any picture where someone you know lined, you know, where they know a picture is being taken, they put the drink down. Just no, you know, just no pictures, you know, just be, and I just, you know, I think about, I mean, I, I, I lived my adolescence and early teens and twenties, you know, relatively photograph free. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the time and though, we didn't time, have, yeah, it, it just didn't have the stuff. And that just isn't, you know, you, I mean, the, what you really have to think about now yeah. is who's holding a camera at any time. Oh. And it just is not, you know, it's just not fair because it, once again, sex Gets treated differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and honestly, who's someone sleeping with? Nobody. It's not. If it's consenting, it's nobody's business. Mm-hmm. But it can still be out there. You know, it's going through there. And it's just, you know, when people say, yeah, I screwed up. Because, you know, I, have, I, I do have friends that are ex. And they said, yeah, there's just things that you do when it's going through there. But it's really nobody's, you know, I, I don't. You know, I don't think anyone is going to think more or less of most people and stuff like that. It, you know, if they're work, you know, like it, it, I, I don't think sex to some extent holds the power that it used to, but it still does. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I'm not saying you know it's still you know it's going through there, not with everything that's been done in the you know past two years. It's just you know you think about hey you know people joke about it. I could never be a politician now. Well hell you know that's all thrown out the window, but it's still it's still someone's private business and i don't care you know you you post a picture someone you know singing at a birthday party and they don't want it up you know that's an invasion of privacy well and and now and there's less you know someone having sex or a selfie or slight you know or anything well i mean and, and again with the proliferation of you know camera phones and all of that kind of stuff i mean there's also been news stories of late where only a portion of maybe a video has been shown mm-hmm. and then that that the then context yeah and so i mean it's just it's it's a little it's a it's a crazy strange 
Um, yeah, I mean, I assume once I step up my house that there's there's not really an assumption of privacy if something, you know, something yeah. happens. So that's probably a mm-hmm. good way to, to conduct yeah. yourself, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, okay, so this is interesting. Um, there's uh, a guy um, in the UK. He's from Malaysia. And his, he uh, is is trying to get asylum in the UK because he's gay and he says he would face jail attack or even murder um, because homosexuality is still a crime in Malaysia, apparently. I did not know that. Um, but he has lost two legal bids to stay. Basically, he's not gay enough. They the, the legal system there in Britain does not believe that he's gay and therefore is rejecting his claim. Now, mind you, he's a member of numerous associations, part of an LGBT church group, and he's worked at pride festivals there. And they're saying, well, you know, you don't have a boyfriend, this, that, and the other. He's like, I'm 67. I don't have sex like I used to, you know, all this kind of stuff. So there's all this whole rally to try to keep him there. It's. Uh, I think. So, I think someone's gonna have to. Vol- uh, some guy's gonna have to volunteer to marry him. <sighs> Would that work though? Because then you know they can still they accuse yeah. you of yeah, the false marriage stuff like that. How, I mean, wait, how do you know you? I mean, I don't understand. I mean, but you know, maybe someone says, "Well, here, someone will volunteer. I'll have sex with you." <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Speaking of videotape, I don't understand. Yeah, what's what's not gay enough? I mean, what the hell? I mean, yeah, that's. <sighs> And Britain, that kind of surprises me a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But anyway. Um, uh, there's probably more there and they're, yeah, going through there. Yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> Delta Airlines, have you flown on Delta lately? Uh, no, I was actually doing Sun Country for a while, but then they got new um, ownership and they're turning it into a uh, tin can in the sky. So I'm, I'm sort of going back to Delta. I mean, you know, with the hub here, it's not like we have a lot of choices in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Well, so (laughs) Diet Coke had these um, napkins. Did you hear about this? (laughs) What? Yeah, I did. A friend saw that, you know. Creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so basically... (laughs) Passengers did not like the um, the napkins that were designed to, quote, try to encourage a little old school flirting. Mm-hmm. Apparently, these napkins um, encourage people to write down their phone number on them and hand them to their plane crush because you're on a plane full of interesting people. And, hey, you never know. <laughs> So, so like, this is creepy. No, as far as I know, everyone I know wants to get on a plane, put in the earbuds and try to ignore that there was someone half an inch away from you. And that your thighs are touching because there's no room. Right. I mean, you, the point of the airplane is to pretend that you're not squashed in with 300 other people. Yeah. I, I, do, I do not want to talk to anyone that I do not know on this plane. I'm not even sure I want to talk to the people that I know on the plane. Yeah. I just, I just, yeah. No, no. It's just, uh, I saw this and I went, oh my God. I had a friend that was a plane, but I, you know, I did a friend was, oh, I thought it was sort of cute. And I'm thinking, yes, but you are a lovely, gregarious human being. The rest of us are, um, are, uh, are, little, uh, are, are little trolls that want to stay home and not talk to anyone sometimes. I mean, I like talking to people on a plane. I am the worst sort of introvert. Just get the hell away from me. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah. I, I, I do, no, no chatting on the plane. Not none. Do not talk to me. Okay. <laughs> I just, no. It's just, Mm-hmm. We well, uh, mainly because I I tend to get motion sick, and so just the act of talking and this and that and just not just it's a lot of work yeah. when you're trying to keep when your I'm not yeah to barf. keep your cookies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. Well, the next minority group to start demanding recognition, respect, mm-hmm. et cetera, are the digisexuals. Those are the people that like to have sex with uh, computers. No, okay, well, yeah, computers, software, and robots. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, oh, whatever. I don't get Na- name your. I, I don't care. You just it doesn't make it. You can have all the labels you want. I mean, wh- what what is going to be different about them? I mean, no one. This particular group of human beings is not. Uh, it, it, no one's going to de- deny them the right to the vote or get married, or um, or do what you know, do whatever the hell they want. They don't want to be stigmatized. Who's stigmatized? Nobody is. Nobody gives a shit. I get, you know, the one thing about that that gets to me is I don't really care. 
whenever I meet a person either socially or at work, for the most part, I don't care what they fuck. It has never occurred to me to think about who, where someone, how someone uses their body parts. Yeah. Now, mind you, I mean, I there are people out there. I mean, there are groups that really hate. I mean, that, that somehow really think it's their job to think about how other people have sex. And I don't understand that. No, I don't either. You know, but it would be, you know, certainly things would be a lot better if people just stopped being so concerned about who was fucking who as long as they were consenting adults. They just spent time on the, on the non, spent more time on the non consenting stuff. Yeah. Life would be a lot better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, there is an occasional, there's there are certain instances though where and I, I with you I 100 million percent I don't like any group that thinks it's their job to go out individual or group that thinks it's their job to go out and tell somebody how to do something the way they think it should be done I just mm-hmm. it's yeah. just not okay mm-hmm. that said we're in a phase right now where a lot of people are getting really in your face with things that I didn't really care to know about you. And I don't, you know, you're fine. You, you know, mm-hmm. that, and so I don't know. It's just a weird kind yeah. of thing. But then, I mean, uh, we're coming up to the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. And, you know, when folks are jailed, beaten, and killed for who they're sleeping with, you know, I can see going to the, ex- you know, the extreme to say, I exist and you're not going to tell me I don't exist. Yeah. And the same with, you know, anyone that, you know, is, is told not to be something. So, you know, you need to be out there and, and show, be, you know, show that you're not going to be um, intimidated. And that's what they did 50 years ago. They said, yeah. that's it. I've had enough. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, but it is, it is really fascinating that honestly, such a, a, a small group of people can make it so horrific for another small group of people. Yeah. And thereby affect the rest of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, and I I just think that they, you know, if they can prove Mm -hmm. that there was a motivation tied to, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, yes. That should be punished as bad. Yeah. It is. It is illegal to beat someone up. But honestly, if you beat, I mean, if, if, if you, you know, if you beat someone up because they are male or because they are female or because they are black or because they are brown or because they are gay or because they are trans, that's an extra layer. And, you know, and I do think that it needs to be considered. Yeah. And I was going through there, you know, if, you know, if, if, if you, you know, beat someone up because the two of you disagree on whether or not uh, uh, Bud Light or Coors Light is better, that's just stupid. You know, mm-hmm. and that's just that that's your basic assault and you're going through there. Mm-hmm. But when you when you when you just go after someone for no you know Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I do understand I do believe that there are you know, there should be hate crime laws. People say there's already laws against beating someone up. I said, Yeah, but if you go after someone just for that, that that is different. Yeah. You know, versus getting drunk and and fighting over what, what beer is better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I agree. Mm-hmm. I couldn't agree more. Well I'm glad you're back. And oh, among us, really, yeah, it's really nice. Not you know, I just I was able to get a hold of doctors and we figured things out. So maybe I won't have to drop like two grand at the ER for pain control anymore. Uh, I hope not. Yeah, bodies are weird, but then again, you also get to have sex with them, so that's awesome. Well, there's that. Mm-hmm.